As some of you will know, due to the lockdown situation, I'm currently running a one-time special offer on my prints, which helps to support my business during this turbulent time. Importantly though, it's also been a truly enjoyable and enriching process to spend time turning my hard work into something physical that's hopefully going to be enjoyed for years to come once it's framed and hanging in our own home, or perhaps even somebody else's home. I produced a video back in September 2018 where I talked about how and why I like to print my photographs. There's a multitude of practical benefits such as a heightened appreciation for light, coloured detail and texture, but there's also some intangible benefits that we perhaps aren't always consciously aware of, but can have a significant impact on our sense of fulfilment, our motivation and our sheer drive to be out there and be creative. There's nothing better than having our own work hanging proudly on the wall to serve as a constant reminder of who we are as a photographer, what we love and what we're striving for, or the work of other artists as a source of inspiration or perhaps something to aspire to. You know, living with printed work helps us to appreciate the qualities that are needed to want to live with a photograph for a lifetime. So with all that in mind, I'd like to talk through a couple of photographs, the paper choice, but also the packaging of a print. Every little detail in each step of the process says something about us, you know, who we are as a photographer and the image that we want to portray. So I think it's important to keep it personal, aligned with our own style of photography, but also with the same level of consideration that we had when we actually made the image. I'll try and show you what I mean. So first up, I have an old favorite called The Dysfunctional Family, which is an image I made during my very first YouTube video. I just love this grouping of trees and superb interaction and conversation in the center of the frame. We have these fantastic curvy members of the audience, the bold and strong parent figure, the frail members of the family to the right, and even this onlooker in the distance that's staying well clear of the argument. All this has been helped massively by this beautiful soft light coming in from the right and then concentrating in the middle. For me, this simply has to be on a high quality matte paper. In fact, all my photographs are now on a matte paper. The image has a softness and a mood that doesn't want to shout too loudly, but has a subtlety and quietness about it. And I also think the trees have some lovely texture, which is successfully lifted and becomes something that you can see and feel when using a textured paper. And that's why I opted for the Photo Speed Platinum Etching 285, which has some really nice texture to it, but also some warmth, which I think suits that warming mist and some of the subtle greens in the scene. It's the same paper that I've used for prints such as this one, uh, which is a, a be beautiful scene that I came across while scouting for workshops in Torridon. And I think it's the scene that again is suited to that slightly warm paper. And I love the fantastic effect that the textured paper gives to those patches of mist drifting through the trees. You might recognize this scene from a video that I made in February last year. Um, interestingly, I was actually quite, quite hard on myself when I made this image. I love the composition, but I had some uncertainties about the light on the trees. But when I came to editing, I realized that everything was much better than I originally imagined. So let's have a closer look. The tree detail lifted quite nicely against the sunlit snowy mountain and the thin light in the shaded subjects served to emphasize the cool gray and blue from the sharp frost. The height of the mist in the glen offers some fantastic separation and atmosphere and I think it shares some similarities with the dysfunctional family in that we can pick out all the family members including those that have passed and those that have been born. I see a story of generations which is why I've called it family tree. In contrast to the dysfunctional family it's cool, it's crisp and so it's well suited to a bright white paper. So I chose Photo Speed Natural Soft Textured Bright White. I love this paper for all my wintry scenes or anything where preserving cool tones is important. It also has a gentle texture which I think adds a subtle but appealing quality to these areas of beautifully clean space. The contrasting warmth of the sun and the mountain can then come forward and be present. I'd like the subjects and details to do the talking in my prints and it's my personal feeling that the matte papers allow the tree scenes to do so gently. So you might have noticed that all my prints have a decent sized whiteboard and that's for a couple of reasons really. Uh, firstly, I think that aesthetically it looks a little bit better, but also it just makes it a bit easier for your framer to mount the print without sacrificing any of the print area. 
but also I have a border at the bottom which is bigger which allows me to number and sign the print and it still looks balanced and I do that with a soft 4B pencil and I think it's important to to sign in the border so then the person who's bought your print can then choose to hide that behind a mount if they prefer a much cleaner look. Everything is printed to the original aspect ratio of the photograph so that always means some trimming is involved. For that I use my Avery Precision Trimmer which gives me a nice clean cut and I think I bought this one from Amazon so I'll pop a link in the description below. For packaging I use these slim black presentation boxes to help protect the print but they can also be used for storage. Firstly I wrap the print in acid free tissue paper before placing it in the presentation box and then something that I've started to do recently is take small pieces of framers tape, fold over the end to create a tab and then lightly fix the wrapped print to the box. This is to ensure that the print doesn't shake around inside the box and potentially get damaged. The tabs should allow the tape to be peeled away from the box quite easily. Now here's the next stage which I absolutely love which completes the package but I also think is very important for not only showing care and consideration but it reinforces your message style and identity as a photographer. So here's a print that's actually waiting to be trimmed which is of an image which I'm sure many of you will recognise. It's called Afraid of Time. Now this location, subject and photograph is very important to me for reasons I'll get into on another occasion but I wanted to keep that connection flowing through my work and for it to inform some of my choices, a symbol if you like. So I asked a friend to create a vector graphic of that tree and then that graphic then became part of my business identity. I used a company here in the UK called Bolsons to make me a heavy duty embossing stamp that incorporates the tree and I use this to seal my certificates of authenticity. These certificates include the edition number but other useful pieces of information such as the capture date, printing date, paper type etc. Nothing for see just clean and simple on a matte card. The same card is used for my thank you cards which incorporate the tree graphic on the rear set against an earthy green colour that sits well with a woodland feel. The theme is continued on my short story cards which offer a little anecdote or insight into the photograph. It's just another touch that reinforces the identity by offering not only something personal but a little snippet about what makes me tick and gets me excited in photography. For the final touch, if the print can be sent flat I bundle together a business card, the thank you card, the photograph story card and the certificate of authenticity into these nice brown craft style envelopes and just continuing that whole kind of natural wooden woodland theme with a the choice of colours and the choice of materials. So then I've got this nice natural twine and some leaf effect twine as well just to tie this together and why not emboss the envelope as well. So just a nice little package that people can keep together with the print. And, uh, and there we go, that's it, all done. I hope you found some of that interesting or useful when printing and packaging your own work, but either way, I hope what's become apparent is the consistency thinking and theme that runs through each stage of the process. Your own connection to nature and how it informs your choices doesn't start and stop when you take the photograph. It's fundamental to your reasons for being outdoors and can keep on flowing to influence how you process, your choice of paper, your embossing seal, uh, the identity on your stationery and how you choose to present your work. Each step of the process says something about you. So keep it 100% you, your voice, your message. You know, we work hard to create images that we care about. So it's important to share a piece of that passion with anyone who's kind enough to buy our prints. As I said, live with prints, judge them, enjoy them daily, learn from them, be inspired and motivated by them. A print to be proud of for a lifetime is one of the most fulfilling things we can achieve as a photographer. So that's it for this episode. As I said, I'm offering 40% off my prints at the moment. This is a one-time offer. I won't be doing it again. It's just because of this lockdown situation. So I'm going to run the offer for one more week from the moment that this video was published. So please take a look, uh, have a browse. Any support is massively appreciated. But thank you very much for watching this episode and as always, I hope to see you for the next one.